We started off our Taylor Swift Eras Tour Singapore trip with very high hopes. I was expecting to get into the lounge with my BBI credit card. Unfortunately, we were turned away because the place was fully booked. So we tried looking for other places to eat, but everything else was packed except this cafe on the opposite end of our gate. Meet the world's saddest and most expensive sandwich. Minus the extra piece of bread, it looked like this. The flight was pretty smooth. I got lots of nice aerial shots. One of the passengers was even giving young Josh Hartman. The plane kept circling for a while due to bad weather, but we finally made it. We stayed at the Swiss Hotel Stamford in Singapore, which was absolutely beautiful. It's strategically located in the heart of Singapore, with the City Hall train station and other major transportation nodes at its doorstep. The room was super clean and spacious, and luckily, they had two beds available for us when we booked. This was part of our Cloak Taylor Swift Eras Tour package, and we wanted to be closer to the vent. Here's the rest of the room with the TV, the Nespresso machine, and here's the bathroom. There wasn't much to take home, but these were promptly refilled every day. And the highlight of this room is this amazing view of the city from our hotel room at night. And this is the view during the daytime. You can clearly see Marina Bay Sands and the rest of the city. Follow me for more travel content. Our very first stop was Chatterbox, which is a famous restaurant in Singapore known for its Hainanese chicken rice. Located in the Mandarin Orchard Singapore Hotel, Chatterbox has been serving its signature chicken rice since the 1970s. The restaurant offers a cozy and upscale dining atmosphere and its chicken rice is praised for its tender chicken and flavorful rice. Despite its location in a hotel, Chatterbox has a casual vibe making it a favorite among locals and tourists alike. This is their signature coconut ice cream, sweet signature of 51 years and counting. It has twin scoops of coconut ice cream encased in a coconut husk, finished with crunchy walnuts and tropical fruits. Next up is Nozomi, located at the popular Nihon Street in Millennia Walk. We got the special chirashi, this signature special features nine types of seasonal sashimi including Hokkaido sea urchin, fatty tuna, sweet shrimp, and salmon roe ikura. We also got the Maguro special which has several types of tuna ranging from lean to fatty, a dream for all tuna lovers. And lastly, we got their lunch menu set consisting of assorted sushi, sashimi, and tempura. Angelina is one of the most popular cafes in Paris and in the world, so of course we had to try it. Located in Marina Bay Sands, we sipped on the French tea room's famed Lafrican hot chocolate. Maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but it was just too thick and rich for me, which I understand is the whole point. We also got their iced tea, which to my surprise was more to my liking than the hot chocolate. Since we were too full to get the afternoon tea, we opted for this light and fluffy pistachio mousse cake and a macaron plate which came in four flavors, the pistachio, dark chocolate, raspberry, and caramel. You get exactly what you pay for in this establishment. The prices do match the quality and taste of the food, the execution, technique, and the ambiance. Flipper souffle pancakes are a fluffy take on the classic pancake. These are known for their light and airy texture and are often compared to a cross between a traditional pancake and a souffle, hence the name flippers. The more you know, they're just as good as I remembered and this was our last meal before heading to the Taylor Swift concert. At around 5.30, we tried to get a grab to take us there but unfortunately, they all kept canceling on us so we ended up taking the train instead. To avoid any copyright issues, I've muted all and any of the music played during the concert. I can't afford a copyright strike. By the time we get to the concert venue, it was raining lightly and the humidity was through the roof. We got through the security check and made our way upstairs. No one ever tells you just how much walking is involved to get to your actual seat. You need to be somewhat physically fit to climb all those stairs and stand in line for the bathroom and the purchase of water. Taylor's Eras Tour is a retrospective journey through her various musical eras, starting from her country beginnings to her transition into pop music and her more recent indie folk sound. Each segment of the tour features hits and fan favorites from each era, along with elaborate stage setups, costumes, and visuals that reflect the aesthetic of that particular era. Her tours are known for their production value, storytelling, and connection with her fans, so this particular tour was a nostalgic and immersive experience for Swifties such as myself, celebrating Taylor's evolution as an artist over the years.
Now, let me tell you about my Taylor concert experience. When we first arrived, I was trying to get my ticket scanned through my phone. The usher assigned to me was fairly older and noticeably unfamiliar with, I guess, using an iPhone, as he irritatedly kept asking me to enlarge my phone screen. My ticket just couldn't be scanned, so I told him that I had a printed copy and we could try using this instead. As you may or may not know, once the ticket has been successfully scanned, you need to go through the turnstile immediately. While I was trying to get my printed ticket out of my bag, the usher was able to scan my ticket and he pushed me through the turnstile. What happened next shocked me to my very core. As I mentioned earlier, it was a very hot and humid day, so to my surprise, I felt a slight breeze on my right side. And to my horror, I realized that my shorts had clung to the turnstile and had been pulled upwards. I don't know who I had flashed, but the right side of my shorts was all the way up, exposing my right butt cheek and my underwear. I will never forget this concert Ever. As we were already running late, Sabrina Carpenter was nearing the end of her set and we were still in line for the bathroom, so we decided not to buy water. It made perfect sense to prioritize the bathroom and just drink water after the concert ended. We got to our seats just as Taylor was starting Cruel Summer, the first song of the night. My seatmate to the right was a guy who kept trying to talk to me in a language I could not distinguish. I told him I could only understand English and hoped he would stop bothering me. I paid all this money and came all this way to see Taylor and not to talk to some random stranger. When he realized I couldn't understand him, he immediately switched to English and asked me where I bought my ticket. I said I got it on Klook and quickly turned to the stage. Good thing he took the hint and didn't talk to me again for the rest of the night. When the concert ended, we tried looking for a taxi or a grab car, but there were really just too many people. It was a sold-out show with a seating capacity of 62,000, so you can imagine just how packed it was. The concert was totally worth it, and though I am incredibly grateful for having the opportunity to see Taylor live, I definitely think twice about going to another event at the National Stadium. There is no air conditioning, and if you couple that with Singapore's weather, it really isn't the most comfortable experience. The concert ended at around 10.20 and we got back to the hotel by midnight. We had not drank any water for over 6 hours and had not gone to the bathroom for over 5. All for the love of Taylor. This is everything I ate in Burnt and Singapore. This was easily the best meal of our entire Singapore trip. We started off with the Grissini Tarasa Malata, which is a delightful Mediterranean appetizer. The Grissini sticks are thin, crunchy breadsticks that provide the perfect vessel for scooping up the creamy dip. One order is not enough. Next up, we had the beef and uni dish. Luxurious and decadent, really good as well. Here's the Jamaican chicken with lime crema. It's a vibrant and flavorful dish that brings together the exotic spices of Jamaica. A dish I didn't know I needed. The maitake porridge and egg yolk was another winning combo. Absolutely chef's kiss. Every dish left me wanting more. This is the bone marrow bun, another yum. The Blackmore strip loin is a premium beef dish that showcases the exceptional quality of Blackmore Wagyu beef. It's renowned for its superior marbling, which results in a tender, flavorful, and melt-in-your-mouth experience. Last but not least, we had the peri-peri chicken, which was grilled to perfection, resulting in a juicy and flavorful dish. This is everything I ate in Atlas Bar in Singapore. We had the most bad and bougie afternoon. The moment you enter, you're instantly transported into the Great Gatsby, easily one of the most stylish places in Singapore. Atlas Bar boasts itself in its exuberant European art deco design and their rich culinary and beverage traditions. We opted for the Atlas Afternoon Tea, which is served on an elegant two-tiered rose gold stand. It is a delectable combination of savory and sweet items complemented with a wide tea selection. It has scones, paired with jam and clotted cream, madeleines, truffled egg brioche, and so on. Overall, the experience was far more filling than I expected, and I recommend coming with an empty stomach. The savories are quite heavy and strongly flavored, so I do recommend a lighter floral or fruity tea to pair with this set. I was pleasantly surprised that everything tasted really good. The food matched the presentation as well as the gorgeous interiors of the establishment. Given the chance, would I come back? Most definitely. This is everything I ate in Oyster Bank in Singapore. I made it to happy, shocking hour, and each naked oyster comes out to two Singaporean dollars each. But you have to order an alcoholic drink in order to avail of this promo. So of course we got a dozen to share. If you like oysters like we do, this is totally the place for you. This is the Yuzu Cloud. Look at how jiggly the yuzu foam is. Next up, we have the garlic miso and mentaiko 
oysters. The mentaiko tastes much better than the garlic miso. Here are the yuzu negatoro cones. They are charcoal cones with tuna tartare dressed with yuzu cream cheese topped with ikura. They were delicious down to the very last bite. This is the Hokkaido scallop ceviche. These are raw scallops dressed with lime, cucumber, and caviar. Chef's kiss. Lastly, we have the spicy salmon tartare. It's salmon sashimi in their signature spice mix served with a crispy wonton skin. I love this place and can't wait to come back. Fairmont Singapore introduces a cap Activating themed afternoon tea experience titled Adventures in Storyland. The experience is designed to take guests on a journey through classic fairy tales and stories, offering a whimsical and immersive dining experience. This enchanting high tea will take guests on a delightful culinary journey of storytelling through the art of gastronomy, immersing themselves in the timeless magical world of Cinderella. The menu focuses on capturing the essence of Cinderella's story beginning with an assortment of savory delights, finger sandwiches transport diners to the magical carriage and enchanting ball where Cinderella and the prince first meet. This is the quail egg and truffle in a butternut bun. Adding a touch of sweetness, the Granny Smith apple pie captures the grandeur and indulgence of the palace ball. Antidote signature duck confit enhanced with rich cured egg yolk and refreshing green peas evokes scenes of the enchanted gardens in Cinderella's story. The Nespresso coffee hazelnut shoe, presented as the prince's crown, offers a rich complement to the high tea selection. Here's the user creation, hand cut and layered with meringue and sparkling sugar to resemble Cinderella's glamorous glass slippers. Here's the apple tart in the shape of the princess castle. As a baker myself, my appreciation for this tea set is immense. Here's the pumpkin cinnamon tea cake, artfully designed to resemble Cinderella's pumpkin carriage. It is so cute. Look at that little baby. This Cinderella model features flavors of black sesame and mandarin orange marmalade. Though I'm not a big fan of black sesame, it was such a cute dessert. Everything was just so thoughtful and on point with the theme. This is the apricot confit, reminiscent of a clock striking midnight. It is accompanied by a caramel cremel. Here's the passion fruit macaron adorned with tropical fruit flavors and stamped with a book's logo. I opted for the vanilla bourbon tea, which was fruity but not floral. They were meant to complement the house-made chocolate-shaped pink diamonds. These were so delicious and you can taste the quality 